the special town council meeting of April 10th. Would you join me in honoring our America, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilor Roy. Here. Councilor Holbrook. Here. Councilor Sullivan. Here. Councilor St. Clair. Here. Councilor Blaze. Here. Chairman Alquist. Here. Uh, welcome tonight. This is a public hearing on the budget. Uh, we have a we have all the school board here. I think sitting in the front row. We have the school uh, superintendent. We have the uh, staff from the school department. We appreciate you coming here tonight, as well as the town staff. Uh, the procedure we're going to use tonight is that Tom Hall, the town manager, will give us a brief overview of the overall budget, um, and from that point. Um, Everybody will have, who wants to will have an opportunity to speak. We ask that you step up to the podium, that you give your name uh, and your address, and you'll have three minutes, and we'll give you a little warning when you're creeping up on the three-minute mark. Um, we want to get everybody in, so please be respectful of other people and keep it to the three minutes. So we have a pretty good crowd here tonight. And then when it's over, uh, we'll tell you what the rest of the uh, uh, the schedule is for the budget, and uh, then we'll adjourn the meeting. So I'll turn it over to Tom. Could you give us an overview Certainly. of the budget, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've been asked to provide a brief kind of a high-level overview, uh, really on behalf of the Finance Committee, who continues its work in reviewing the budget, and also really to set the stage. Uh, just by way of background, I presented this proposed budget on March 20th. And uh, both the school board, uh, through its finance committee, and the town's finance committee um, has been reviewing the budget. And what I'm going to present this evening, I'll put the caveat out there, uh, reflects uh, no formal votes of either of those bodies, but what I believe to be a, a, a kind of the, a, a fair estimate of where we are today and what's likely, if not more, uh, that will, will ultimately be before the council for adoption. Uh, so for those that have been playing, uh, you know, uh, keeping score, the numbers have changed slightly uh, in, in, I would say, in the right direction. Um, and perhaps I'd suggest there's more work to be done. So uh, for the benefit of the public, for the public hearing, I'll start with a little process discussion just so we understand where we are. Um, first and foremost, the council established a bud budget goal this year that has been a guiding um, principle for myself and my staff, and I think the school board has taken it to heart as well. Uh, and it's worth just touching on those uh, essential components of that goal. That Those are to maintain essential services, to maintain infrastructure, maximize non-property tax revenue sources, and limit, limit expenditure increases to no more than 3%. Quickly, by way of process, I alluded to earlier, uh, uh, things are still very much in process. Uh, the School Finance Committee continues its work in reviewing its portion of the budget uh, for education. Uh, I believe they are scheduled at this point for second reading um, on April 26th, excuse me, 22nd, uh, 7 p.m. in these chambers. On the town side, uh, the Town Finance Committee uh, scheduled four meetings. They've held three of them already. The fourth is scheduled for next Tuesday morning. Uh, the Finance Committee has been meeting at 8 a.m., and I suspect this will last at least till 10, perhaps a little longer, uh, depending on the workload. I expect at this meeting the Finance Committee will uh, loop back, if you will, to what they've heard in presentations, and um, I hope by the end of that session we'll have a list of recommended changes to the Council, again, many of which uh, I've incorporated in this presentation tonight to give you as uh, accurate an estimate of where I think we are. Uh, and then ultimately, um, there will be a budget workshop. This is a joint session between the school board and the town council, and that's scheduled in these chambers for April 22nd. 24th. Excuse me, 24th. I'm getting those dates wrong. So the gross budget of the town um, this is a graphical representation of how it breaks up. Um, on the gross side, and this considers just expenditures only. Uh, so education uh, makes up 55% of the budget, municipal 42 and county 3%. This gives a little more detail on the uh, expenditure of the uh, 
expenditure side of the budget. What I'm showing here is uh, current year, that's the fiscal year 13 budget, and where we are at this point um, on the fiscal year two th uh, 2014 budget. Uh, and on the municipal side, we're looking at a 1.54% increase in expenditures. Education, uh, through some recent efforts just this past week, um, have their percent increase down to 6.64%. The county remains constant at 5.72%. Uh, and I say remains constant, they essentially send us a bill. There's really no wiggle room to cut that. Uh, it, is, it is what it is. And so all considered together, uh, we're looking at a 4.55% increase uh, in expenditures. It's worth going into a, a, a bit of detail. Uh, the superintendent was kind enough to provide uh, this slide to me. These are the objectives that guided his process and that of his leadership council and I think the school board. So I'll just run through these quickly. Uh, their objectives are uh, to have a budget that's responsive to community expectations. That include uh, further clarity uh, around priority data and efficiency driven. And I believe a lot of this has to do with uh, information gathered through the community dialogue process. Um, an update to that is coming later next month, I believe. This month. I won't, I won't venture to uh, guess at the date. 23rd. <laughs> and that's around areas uh, for system structures and programs that run throughout the education budget. The other guiding objective or principle is create a credible, balanced, and student-centered budget, which builds on incentives from the current fiscal year, advances teaching and learning um, improvement for K through 12, and sustain continuous improvement focus and momentum. Uh, a lot of that momentum uh, has been, I guess, restarted in the current year budget. A bit further on the expenditure side for school, uh, the total increase for expenditures is 2,600,000 in uh, change. That equates to that 6.63 or 4% increase in expenditures. I think it's important to note that uh, of that total expenditure increase, nearly 80% of it is captured in just these items listed below, and I'll just run through them fairly quickly. Uh, they include contractual obligations through salary and wage and, I presume, benefits. Um, um, this year, the governor's proposed budget at the state level pushes some expenses uh, back to the town, and this teacher retirement costs, traditionally they have been shared 50-50 by state and local. Now they'll be borne 100 percent locally, and that equates to a almost $525,000 new cost to us. There's increase in debt service, um, predominantly driven by the new Wentworth School. There are increases in health insurance premiums. Some of the federal sequestration um, has effects uh, on our programs in the school department. And to a smaller or lesser degree, there's increases in some of the main state retirement um, costs as well. So those uh, six items account for over 80% of the increase. Um, it's worth noting, I think, that to date, the, the, from where we started, uh, the school has offered up reductions in their expenditure request of $1.134 million or so. Of course, that's only half the equation, talking about expenditures. Uh, that is the portion that we have direct control over, arguably, and I've encouraged the Finance Committee to spend their time um, on what we have control over. Uh, but of course, we're affected uh, by revenues uh, as well. That's the other side of the equation. Uh, by by far and away, property tax uh, uh, represents the majority of our, our revenue stream. Uh, that, that amounts uh, to 71 percent of our total revenues. Uh, and then there's some much smaller amounts beyond that. Digging a bit deeper, just to, to show you on both the uh, edu uh, municipal and education side. Um, Unfortunately, the story is the same in that we're both experiencing a loss in revenues. Uh, on the town side, we're looking at about a 6% decrease in, in uh, revenues. And I'll say those are the non-property tax revenues. And perhaps the, the largest comp single component is, again, a component of the governor's budget. Uh, the governor's proposed budget has a number of 
potential effects um, on our revenue. Um, I've done some analysis, talked to our local legislative delegation, and I've included in this uh, proposed budget, and, and it remains today, a reduction in commercial excise tax uh, revenue that we traditionally have kept locally to, to take care of roads. Uh, the proposal is for that to remit, to actually go to the state to maintain the state highway system. Uh, that's about $170,000 alone. On the education side, they're showing an 18.4% reduction, and that's almost entirely made up of a uh, reduction in general purpose aid to education. Um, it is a function of the very complicated uh, funding formula associated with distribution of, of those resources statewide. Um, and really, though our local tax base has certainly not grown to the level it has in recent past, um, we did outperform uh, most others. Um, many others were lucky to stay the same in their total value, and others, uh, many others actually reduced in value. And so uh, the effect of that uh, going through the same formula is that we receive yet again less. So cumulatively, the revenue reduction is 10.6%. Provide a little detail, uh, just interesting fact, um, kind of depressing fact actually, but general purpose aid to education has, has been reduced uh, by over 47% since 2008. And of course, um, that's all made up on the backs of local property taxpayers. On the municipal side, we're showing a 2.4% reduction. That has to do with uh, the loss of some grants and some other reimbursement <coughs> programs that we uh, participated in. I mentioned a moment ago the commercial excise tax. I've put an asterisk there. This is yet to be determined. Um, but uh, my hunch, unfortunately, is that it's going to survive and, and we'll be living with that reduction. And on the education side, um, I'm just showing um, the uh, total loss of, in general purpose aid to education of over 1.2 million. So the net budget obviously considers both uh, expenditures and revenues, non-property tax revenues, and considers what needs to be made up locally, uh, the so-called tax levy. So the pie changes a bit. Uh, you'll see education picks up a, a larger share, really due to the fact that they have uh, virtually uh, no non-property tax revenue sources. Uh, well, I shouldn't say no, but very few uh, that produce fairly small amounts. Uh, so 65% of the net budget is made up from the education side, 31% uh, on the municipal, and 4% for county. The budget also includes the capital improvement program. On the town side, uh, we break it into capital projects, and I've listed a number of them here. Uh, these have been taken up by the Finance Committee as departments appear before them. I suspect there'll be further conversation um, around these issues. Um, I won't bore you with the details at this point. Uh, capital equipment, we have two plow trucks uh, we propose to get back on our equipment replacement schedule and a rescue ambulance uh, rescue unit to be replaced. And on the school side, they have kind of three areas of capital needs, uh, those being technology, transportation, and facilities. And facilities, uh, the majority of that money, I believe, is all focused around safety-related issues uh, for, for uh, different school facilities. So what this all means for the, uh, for the taxpayer, and that's often uh, an obvious question, uh, one that we try hard to be uh, as accurate as we can in projecting this. It's worth just noting that uh, this is often a difficult calculation. Um, right now we're talking about uh, establishing the, the tax levy, how much we need to raise to support local priorities and efforts. The other half of that equation that uh, ends up uh, dictating the tax rate is what the total value, the commitment of the town is. And that's not done until early August, so there's a three or four month offset. So um, wrapped up into this are some assumptions, and, and the, the base assumption is that we'll add $15 million in value to our tax base uh, at the time of next commitment. I think that's a fairly reasonable, perhaps conservative estimate, but nonetheless, um, I, th I think it needs to be conservative at this juncture. 
So when considered together, both expenditures and, and revenues, we're looking at a 10.57% increase to the tax rate, which potentially has the effect of adding a dollar forty to the ta to the tax rate for a total of fifteen dollars and twenty uh, cents per thousand in value. And we uh, we've provided the calculation for the average uh, property owner with a property valued at three hundred thousand dollars. That would mean a, an extra four hundred twenty dollars in taxes. And lastly, just to leave you with where we go from here. So tonight, April 10, we're holding public hearing. Uh, tomorrow evening, uh, there'll be a joint meeting of the Town Finance Committee and the School Finance Committee um, here in these chambers, I believe it's at 7 p.m. I'm not entirely familiar with the format of that meeting. Um, perhaps at closing comments, uh, Councilor Roy could add some clarity if anyone's interested. Uh, following that, uh, as I mentioned, next Tuesday morning will be the final uh, Town Finance Committee meeting. Um, that ought to be a, a good one in that that's where they'll be making, uh, having deliberations, further deliberations, and I think making some final recommendations. Moving along, the following week on the 24th, we have a budget workshop that will be a joint session of both the Council and the School Board, uh, again in these chambers. And all of that points toward the second and final reading, which is scheduled for the regular public meeting of the Council on May 1st. It will be uh, one of the items on their agenda for business. And ultimately, this effort culminates in uh, the school budget validation referendum vote that is scheduled for uh, May 14. And again, we'll be conducting those here at Town Hall in these chambers. In establishing the schedule, we really fixed that date first, the validation vote, and kind of work backward. We've given ourselves a little room. The budget needs to be adopted by the end of June, uh, technically, legally. So there is some time, should the, the budget need to be reworked and go back to the voters, we've allowed for a little time on the back end for that, uh, should it be necessary. So with that, that's a very high level uh, introduction to where we stand tonight. Uh, again, it's a work in progress. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I'll now open the public hearing. Anybody who'd like to speak, please step up to the podium and state your name and your address, and we'll give you three minutes. Step right up, and please line up so we don't uh, have too much of a delay. Who's going to be first? Hi, I'm Deborah Few Shortman. I live at 15 Fairway Drive. Um, try and keep it quick. Um, I think if you look at any quality town, it has a quality educational system. Um, and in, as you saw from an excellent presentation, since 2008, our educational system has really been slammed by the state um, and how much that they are providing for us or how little over time. Um, and also during that period, there are many years that the town of Scarborough um, cut the school budget as well. I know last year that wasn't the case, which is good. Um, but I think I'm hoping that the town council looks at that and for this year realizes that keeping the school budget the same or a tiny increase um, isn't enough to keep it going the way it is. It's a lean, mean machine. Um, a lot of people talk about how fancy our school buildings are. Um, I've been to other schools in the area, like Gore Middle School. If anyone goes in there, that's a fancy building. <laughs> I mean, we have good buildings, we have safe buildings, but we haven't really done it over the top. Um, and I think that has to do with the rest of our school system and our teachers and our programs, too. They do a really good job with the budget that they have. Um, and in general, for the state of Maine, we are one of the lowest in per pupil expenses. Um, but yet, they're still high function, high performing. Um, and I really am afraid that if we don't make up for the lack of funding from the state, that we're going to lose the quality in our town. And if you lose a quality education system in town, usually the quality of the town goes down too. And that includes property taxes. So thank you. Thank you. Next. My name's Dave Green. I live at 135 Beach Ridge Road. 
Uh, I forgot to bring my tape recorder tonight because I'm going to tell you the same thing I stood here and told you a year ago. And that is, I would like to commend the municipal side of the budget. I, I think that is just another second year in a row outstanding job. The school budget, I, I can only ask the council that you, you reject that budget. It's in excess of a million dollars more than we can afford to spend. I know the quality of life, and you're going to hear it all night long. The sad fact is, my wages don't go up to cover the $420 increase on my tax bill that I'm going to be looking at next year. And we're getting to the point that some of us can't afford it. I'm not afraid to admit it. I can't afford $450 increase on my already tax bill that the state of Maine gives me a refund on because they look at it under the circuit breaker program that Scarborough's taxes are far too high for my wages. And I get a refund every year under the circuit breaker program. And that is shameful. It really is. We need to get a better handle on the education side of this budget. So I ask you to consider that. If it needs to go back to the voters, so be it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, step right up. Name and address, please. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Kim Bridgham. Um, I live at 204 Spurwink Road. Um, I think for me, I'd like to see some benchmarking done. So what do we pay our teachers compared to other Cumberland County towns? What is our mill rate compared to other Cumberland County towns? I feel like it, education is expensive, but if we don't increase the education bill, parents of kids are just paying fees upon fees upon fees. And if you have right now two children in Scarborough High School playing three sports each, that, that family is paying almost $1,000 in out-of-pocket fees between what they pay for the town and then what they pay the boosters to pay for uniforms and things like that. And I just think that's not what public school is all about. Um, public school is supposed to be your taxes cover that. And I, I that's just an example of sports, and um, I feel fortunate that I can afford to do that, but I know a lot of parents can't do that. So before we start cutting, I think we really need to benchmark about where we are compared to other towns and the quality of what we want to provide in our town. Thank you. Next. Can you step right up? Doug Friedman, 17 Lillian Way. Um, this is the first time I've ever looked at a town budget, first time I've ever been involved in trying to think about these issues. Uh, that said, I have been working for commercial businesses for a very, very long time, been involved in budgeting, do my own personal budgets, and I've been doing that for 20 years. This is the first time I've ever seen a budget created where you look at the expense side before you look at the revenue side, and that's probably the nature of government and how it works. Um, but for me personally, the gentleman before talked about his wage increases, and my wage increase last year was 1.8%. So um, hearing a mill rate increase of over 10% gives me immediate pause. So then I look at what was the inflation rate in the last couple of years, and it's been hovering around 2%. And we have all the issues that Mr. Hall discussed about the state problems and the changing of funding towns from the state. But it seems that... Um, if we're looking at an increase of our taxes of 10%, we have to look harder at the expenses of our town. And I don't know whether that's in the municipal budget or in the, in the uh, school budget or both. But that just seems to me, it seems to me there's going to be a fair number of people in town that that's going to be an incredibly difficult ask, a 10% increase. I did have one question for Mr. Hall, and this is not necessarily to be answered now, but the numbers that you put up there didn't seem to tie in to the numbers that were presented in the financial report of the end of last year in terms of budgeting. So I don't know if I'm missing something in looking at these reports or if the numbers have changed or, or what. But I'm only starting. So, 
so those are the, those are some of the comments I had. I did have one other comment, and that was the paperwork that was online for this meeting listed a whole series of fees for the town. And when I look at a graph in this document, it seems to suggest that the fees that we earn from the town are only something like 500,000 a year, so it's a small number. But I notice that most of these fees have not increased in many years. Why are we not putting up our fees, our revenue side, if we have the increase in expenses? So just a few points I noticed, and I have other questions, but that's enough for now. Thank you. Who's next? I, I just like to remind people we will um, we will answer your questions. We'll give them over to uh, Council Roy, who's the chairperson of the Finance Committee, or uh, uh, Tom Hall, the manager, and we'll get back to you at some point really? to the Finance <laughs> Committee. Next. My name is Susan Hamill, and I live at 8 Shady Creek Lane in Scarborough. Um, <clears throat> I think that the proposed increase uh, to the taxes um, 400, whether it's 400, 500, 300, I think it's absurd. It's just crazy. I feel like in this economic slowdown that we've experienced, we this is the new normal. Um, this is the way things are going to be. And the idea that we're looking at a 10% increase in taxes makes me wonder um, what, what was the emergency that we didn't foresee? Um, what are we doing this year that we didn't see it coming, that suddenly we need to increase our taxes 10%? Now, I, I know that, there's, that the state revenue sharing is down a bit, and, um, and potentially it could be down even more than what we have planned for in this budget um, to the tune of maybe another million dollars is the, the figure that I've seen coming out of the state. So I don't know what, how we deal with that when we get that final number in June. And that is a big concern that I have. I think that, that also, over the last 10 years, um, the percentage of residents over the age of 60 living in Scarborough has grown to 24%. And as we know, you know, we've got, so we've got almost a quarter of our population in the town that is on a fixed income, in retirement, or about to retire. And I think that we need to do a better job focusing on keeping the tax rate level and not increasing taxes. This has to be a priority. Um, the, our student population in Scarborough is lower now than it was 10 years ago, yet we are seeing these huge increases year after year in what we spend on education. And I could go on. Um, I think that what I'm really saying is that we need to review the town operations and practices with an eye to cutting everything that can be cut. Um, just because we've done things in the past a certain way doesn't mean we need to do it in the future. Um, everything needs to be looked at, from things like weekly trash pickup, cell phone usage. Why do we pick up every, at every single driveway? If you've ever gotten stuck behind a school bus, and as you go along, and the bus stops at every driveway, why do we, why do, we do things like that? But I, there are three things I'd like to see happen. I'd like to, uh, I wonder why, why can't we put the entire town budget up for vote? Why do we only put the school budget up? I mean, we're going to the polls anyway. Why, I, I mean, we do care what people think or how they feel about the town budget. So why can't we put that on the ballot? Um, and I'd really like, any, I, I would like to get that question answered. The second thing that I'd like to see is an, a real review of municipal operations um, with an, the goal of improving efficiency and cutting costs. Uh, I know that there are studies done in Cumberland County that compare town um, operations and uh, look at municipal benchmarks. And I would like to see where, where does Scarborough um, fall compared to other towns. The last thing I'd like to see is a, a website where um, all the citizens could, uh, like a Facebook, like the police have, where people could um, make comments, suggestions, complaints, um, praise town services. Uh, so I, I, we're behind the times in that. Thank you. Next. Step right up. Anybody else? Yep. 
Hi, good evening. My name is Mo Erickson, and I live at 288 Pine Point Road. And um, I just, I have a lot of things I want to say. First, um, I work as a nurse. My husband used to work at Nissen's Bakery. He doesn't have a job anymore. I can't afford to pay $420 increase for my taxes. I wish I could, but I, I love this town. I want to stay here, but you're killing me. You're going to make it so I have to move, and I, I don't want to do that. And um, I feel like I always hear about the school budget being cut, the school budget being cut. Well, I can tell you in my household, now that we've had our income cut, we cut all kinds of things. I squeeze the toothpaste <clears> tube. <throat> we don't get pizza when I want to. Um, my kids wear sneakers longer than they should. <clears throat> That's what we need to be doing as a town. I'm afraid to say it out loud, but I'm going to. I want the police to come to my house when I call them, and I want the fire department to come to my house when I need them. But those are things that I feel like we're always advocating for them, and I want to, but those are departments that I think they need to do their share of clipping the budget. Um, the Parks Department, the, um, the Public Works Department, do they ever get cut? Does anyone ever get cut off or laid off from those positions? How about here in this building? Has anyone ever been laid off? All we keep doing is adding, adding positions. We're going to get a tree counter. We're going to get a light electricity guy who does all the lights in the town. I mean, I know in my house, and I can't be the only family, you're, you're killing us. So I just really hope that you take that into consideration. Um, for the common person that lives in Scarborough. you got to help us out. And I have four kids in the school system. And I sometimes have to tell them, you know what, you can't play this sport this, se this season because I don't have enough money. I want you to, but you can't. My kids, eighth grade this year, you know where they're going for their field trip? Memorial Park. Won't that be fun? Yay! Graduation from middle school, and that's their field trip to Memorial Park. They can't go anywhere because they don't have any money. So um, I, I don't want to have any more from the school budget cut. But I also, I can't afford to pay my taxes. So I think it's just time that we all take a good hard look at the way the town spends money on the town, and we need to cut it. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Um, my name is Jane Then and you live on 11 Abigail Way. Uh, I think we have heard many people talking about the budget increase is hard on them, and I think I can understand. I have come before you talk about um, the state funding for the schools, and, and we were trying to, I certainly have, I think, see the town's reality, we have, you know, diverse uh, background and demographics and they are, you know everybody have different opinions on how the budget should be so but I think um, and I w we have seen our school budget hasn't been um, you know expanding for years or since yeah we have been very tight on the budget and uh, stuff that the the school board, the school budget proposed, have a lot of things that has been put up, like the replacement of buses for the past several years. So it's not really they are trying to say now it's time to spend some money. You know, we are all having hard times. Everybody knows. It. I think they have definitely. I mean, I the school boards have discussed the details and the, the leadership council in the school board. I trust them, have looked at everything very closely. I think a lot of you probably have toured our schools. They are not really, you know, funded real well. And uh, I, the reason they are going to a Memorial Park because the school doesn't have much money. So we are very tight. And I think we are putting them into, you know, you know, we give them a job to do, say, to educate our children, but we don't give them money. That will not work. You know, you put them in a rock, between a rock and a hard place. So what do we have here? You know, you know, economic downtimes, but I know everybody is, you know, have their own 
view on this thing. I, I want to emphasize, you know, our for family, I moved here about three and a half years. The reason I choose Scarborough because Scarborough I perceive as a town that care about the schools. And I think a lot, you know, if you want to attract middle class and professional families and bring the, maintain the Scarborough property value, you really had to make the schools attractive, and you know, compared to the towns around here. And our school, you know, budget is compared to the cohort around here. Uh, you probably have heard from the superintendent. It's very, very low. It's one of the bottom, you know, of 20 or 12 or 13. So we are. It's if we cut and let our school and children down. It's going to see the town's property tax, the town's, you know, it's just, it's not going to be beneficial for anybody who live here. I know the people who have hard time um, paying these increases in taxes. However, you know, you also have your wealth increased by your raising your um, property values. So there's a lot of things that come into play. And I really think um, it's, probably good idea to see, um, put this out there to the community and let everybody vote on it. I, because, I, you know, you will hear a lot, you know, whoever comes here going to make noises. However, I see this community has been supporting our schools. Last year we passed the school budget, you know, b b new school building uh, project. So you can see that if you put this out there, we have a community do support our schools. So, you know, it's, um, if somebody comes to the school and says something needs to be cut, there is savings, bring it over. You know, I'm sure um, the you know leadership council will be happy to look at them. However, you know, just say you know you need a cut. It's not very responsible. So Can we wrap it up? Okay. Yes. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. Yep. No. Thank you very much. Who's next? Anybody else would like to speak? Name and address? Um, Bob Mitchell, 39 Willowdale Road. Uh, I just like to kind of pick on something different. I think a lot of people had some good comments, uh, and I don't begrudge the six or seven sitting up there or those sitting in this row because it's a lot easier here than it is up there, and I'm enjoying here versus there. Uh, that being said, uh, and I think for the public, I think one thing I want to stress is there's a lot of misinformation out there. I know I've been on it in the past, and so I. Hopefully, I'm not given any more misinformation. Uh, clearly, the whole country, the state, you know, everybody's got issues. We've been in debt for years at all levels. Uh, the state's passing on a lot to, to us. Do we pass it on or do we have to control? I think we have to balance. I think I've always said we've got to balance what we need and how much we can afford. Out of all the comments, one thing that I don't think anyone talked about, and if I read uh, the manager's numbers correctly between the school and the town, we're putting up $5.3 million in debt on stuff that is really all small stuff. It, not a single project was even 1% of the entire budget, which is roughly $75 million. I mean, I'm not going to debate, debate between what the school needs and what the town needs, but somehow we've got to look at our process that we don't continue to just bond things when it's an everyday need or a continual need. I know obviously the Wentworth project was a big thing that voters voted for that. The same thing is maybe in 2020 or maybe a little early 2018, we're trying to get a public safety bill and it's obviously way down the road. But the flip side, if you're bonding $5 million a year or more than $5 million a year, you're never going to get ratings that allow you to go out and do big capital projects that you literally need over the 10, 30 year time horizon. So I, I heard comments, you know, the. The school obviously has a high percentage increase. The town had, but, but we're putting up $5 million in daily cost. How many people would go out and mortgage a 1% item? Uh, so anyways, I, I just hope the council and the finance committee on both sides really looks at what we can afford and take complete debt. I realize today's environment, obviously the interest rates are great. I mean, we did, a, I worked with a lot of people last year about the whole refinancing and, you know, obviously rates stayed down where we said they're going to be down for another two years. But even though it's cheap money, so to speak, 
you're never going to be able to have the long-term infrastructure if you continually put up that type of debt. Uh, I'm more here to talk about 10 years from now as opposed to a daily one year. I've been here for 100 years. I hope generations will be here for another 100 years. If we continue to just mortgage ourselves at the expense of the short term without really looking at what our long-term ability is, we're going to be in the same boat the state is. And five years from now, we'll be in the same structure. So I, I, I'm not debating, because I do think education is key. I mean, I went through a, this town system, did pretty well. The town's done very well with most people. But you, you got to balance both, and I just, that's uh, uh, back to one other couple of things. Wage inflation, it's been 1% to 2% max for the last couple of years. It's not going over the next three years. If you look at the euro and the whole global economy, inflation's going to be down, wage inflation's going to be down. you got to factor all those things in for a longer-term budget cycle. Everybody here in the municipal side is just short-term focus. And so I just hope when you get together, you really look at the long-term picture and come up with a long-term tax base in incremental increase that can be consistent and doesn't just get into today's expenditures. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Who's next? Step right up, please. Anybody else would like to speak? Anybody? Here's your opportunity. Yep, sure, step right up. Name and address, please. My name is Barry Jenkins. I live at 47 Everett Green Farms Road here in Scarborough. I'm not a teacher. I don't work for the town. But as I look at the amount of tax increases the last two or three years, $420 and $300,000 house doesn't sound like much. I'm paying more than that in my house. I paid a lot more last year, too, and the year before. You start adding those little pieces together, you get a lot more money to look at that's coming from me for the benefit of others, which I don't think is right. Uh, I was just looking at the crowd here, and if you don't mind, just out of curiosity, I'm curious how many of you are here. Just, just direct your comments to us. Don't okay, then, I, them, then I, I have nothing more to say. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Anybody else would like to speak? I see a lot of people up there. Just step right up, if you would. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Brad Dupie. I live at 35 Evergreen Farms Road here in Scarborough. I guess I just feel i got to say something here because I... I've only come to these meetings for the last couple of years, and it's the same process. I think that at some point in time, if I were projecting some of these budgets, I'd actually be a little embarrassed to present 10% increases over last year's budget and or higher in some cases. We're talking a lot of money here. Um, we've known since 2008 that you were going to be getting reductions from the state. When did someone start looking at that, or have they ever started looking at that? Because things just keep going up. I don't see where anything's getting cut. The school system is, is a big portion of the budget. Grows like crazy. Um, I just don't see how we can do that. I, the property tax, again, you know, going up, I think originally it was going to be 500 and something more. I guess there's been a slight change in that. But at $420 more, my, my, taxes, my taxes in two years alone are going to be going up almost $1,000. That's kind of ridiculous. It really is. Um, the boards, you, your boards are supposed to be looking out for all the town members. That's why you're here. We, we elect you to do your best job. I know you're not pros at that because... Anybody can get elected to the board if they want to and run and get voted into the thing. So I, under, I understand that. But you've got to look at everybody, every citizen, the rich, the middle, the poor. Everybody has to take, be, be taken into account. And, and I'm not sure that that, with, with budgets like this, I don't see that happening at all. Household incomes don't grow. How, how does a family get more money? You can't tax your kids. 
you tell them to go up, go to work. Why can't the town live within a budget instead of having to increase it all the time? What is wrong with America today? We're going broke. And everybody's fighting people that want to cut budgets. You know, you, you have to suffer at some point in time. Homes suffer. People suffer. You've heard someone say tonight, you know, they just can't afford to do everything that they'd like to do. You have to somehow put a, put a stop on some of this stuff. I guess overall, I just would appreciate the uh, members of the boards to really take a look at these, these numbers, and, and I think that they have definitely got to be cut some more. You, I mean, you're, at some point in town, at some point in time, the town's going to erupt a little bit on this. And it came close last year when the budget, I don't think, came, did not pass by a great margin. You know, this year you start throwing these numbers out at people again, you got, a, you got another situation here. It's not going to be an easy street all the time. You can't go to the well time and time again. You can't tax people to death. You can't do it. Thank you. Next. Good evening. My name is Will Ledley. I live at 82 Two Rod Road. Uh, last year I was fortunate enough to have the time to spend a Saturday here while the school board went through their workshop uh, to formulate their budget, in the process of formulating their budget. And I just, I know this is nothing, no news to you, and I think I've also spent some time um, watching the town formulate its budget and pay attention to it uh, and I've paid attention to it over the last couple of years and I I don't envy any of you and I was pretty impressed with the process that was spent I mean it was just one day out of a whole budget process and it was grueling trying to figure out how to make that work so I wanted to express my respect for the school board for the town council because I don't envy any of you, given the fact that um, over $1 million in the increase to the school budget, to speak in particular, is contractual obligations, stuff we can't do anything about right now. Um, so that 10% is the net number, the gross increase in the school budget of six something percent. Um, Again, 80% of that's contractual obligations that you can't do anything about. It doesn't leave a whole lot in there that's discretionary to cut. Um, and so that 10% number, I think, is, can be used or misconstrued quite enormously. Now, I'll say that I don't know how I'm going to come up with an extra $420 this year either to pay my taxes if I have to. Um, that's just about what my house is valued at, maybe a little bit less than that, so I'm not liking that number. Um, so I, I encourage both boards, and I'm glad that this is a work in progress, and I uh, appreciate all the work that I've seen you do in the past, and I hope you'll continue to work just as diligently to see if you can reduce that number in any way. Um, but I also uh, appreciate all the services that we get. I know that I think that they're very good value uh, and are in line with what we pay for them are a very good value and uh, are in line or uh, a better value than what most towns around here receive and pay. So I want to thank both of you very much and I wish you luck in trying to do a good job in a very hard situation. Thank you. Who's next? Anybody else would like to speak? Roger DeVoe, I live at 15 Winmore Drive. Uh, I guess I just want to echo a couple of things I've heard. Uh, one is the benchmarking. I've heard that we spend a lot less per student in the school budget than other towns. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but I would like to know what we do spend per student compared to other communities in the area. If it's lower, uh, how do we justify that? Um, the other thing I'd like to echo is uh, the voting on the town budget. So we put the school budget up for vote. Why is that when we don't vote on the town budget as well? Uh, I think that's, that's an important thing to do, and I'd like to know why that hasn't been done in the past. Uh, I think we need to spend more on the, on the school budget, and I think we need to spend less on the town side. Thanks. Thank you. Who's next? Anybody else would like to speak? Anybody else? 
you know, last chance to speak <coughs> on the budgets. Anybody else? Can you speak twice? Yes. <laughs> you can if you can. I, I want to say one thing. It's <coughs> yeah, driving one, me crazy. One thing, yep. I, I uh, read in the paper that I think you guys are going to spend maybe $500,000 for an energy uh, efficiency on this building. And um, my suggestion to that is put it on hold and do what I do at home, and that's put a sweater on. Um, you know, I, I don't think we can afford to do that right now. And I'll also say that the thought of building uh, another public safety building, I believe in 2016, that's only two, three years away, just sounds crazy to me. I can't believe that we would actually be building another building like that. When you go through other towns, and you look, we have a beautiful town hall, we, and it's new. It's only 13 years old. We have a beautiful public safety building. Um, I just, again, the gentleman who spoke of long-range planning, um, I hope you take that into consideration, and I do hope we put those type of things up to a town vote. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak before we close the public hearing? Going once, going twice, anybody else? I'll close the public hearing. Again, um, I'll mention tomorrow night there'll be a joint finance committee with the school board and the town finance uh, committee will meet tomorrow night here at 7 p.m. Uh, April 16th. 8 o'clock in the morning, the Finance Committee will meet here for their final recommendation uh, to the Council and to take up a few other items. April 24th, uh, 7 p.m. will be uh, the Council and School Board Workshop. That will be in this room at 7 p.m. May 1st will be the Town Council's uh, final vote on the budget. And May 14th, uh, it will be sent out the school referendum for a public vote. <clears throat> That's it. Having said that, uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Well, thank you for coming, folks. <laughs>